Welcome to Mom Unair Digital Marketing Podcast, where we gather to learn how to use online strategies to build our direct marketing business. Through this podcast, you will be learning how to create offers, funnels, and storytelling so that you can create value for your potential customers as well as your downline. Enjoy the show. Insider's Guide to Create Value for Your Perfect Customer and Get Return on Your Investment. In our last podcast, we talked about knowing your ideal customer and knowing your ideal team members for your direct marketing business. So I gave you some strategies on how to conduct research to find out information about your ideal customers and to create an avatar of your ideal customers so that when you are providing your information, you are giving value to that customer. So one of the things that I like about direct marketing is that I am able to build relationship with my customers as well as the people who join my team. Now, just to give you some information about me, in my early 20s, I started in the hotel industry in the Bahamas, and I worked as a front desk manager and also as a tour representative in the Bahamas, which is a lot of fun, and I enjoyed being in the Bahamas. But after a while of living in the Bahamas, I decided that I'm so used to the fast New York pace that I went back to New York. While living in New York, I worked at the Waldorf Astoria. I actually started in the reservations department at the Waldorf Astoria and worked my way up to the front desk. The New York Palace, which was at that time in my 20s called the Helmsley Palace, was undergoing management change. I moved with the management team from the Waldorf Astoria to the New York Palace and worked my way up while working at the New York Palace. I became the sales coordinator for the Place Athene in Paris. I also worked in the travel industry um, as a travel agent for Liberty Travel in um, near Lincoln Center, near 66th Street. It still exists. I can't believe that it's still there. And I have also worked my way to becoming a sales manager working for one of the Marriott properties in Princeton, New Jersey. So I have been in this business for quite a long time. And I have to tell you, I love the sales industry, whether it be in the hotel industry. I've also been a business manager for major cosmetic lines. I've had my own cosmetic business. One of the key things that I have learned is that when you are selling, You do not want to come out salesy as a salesperson, pushing your product on other people. You want to provide value and you want to let your customers know that you really care about them. You understand their problem and you have solution. You're showing them steps to solution to their problem. You also want to speak the language of how they're feeling in that position that they're not happy in and also How is that solution that you're providing for them will get them to that next step where they're going to experience joy. But in order for you to do that, you have to build that relationship with your customers where they feel comfortable to come to you and rely on you knowing that you are going to give them the best answer. And that means that if your product is not for them, you're telling them, no, the product, your product is not for them and you can direct them to a company that has a product that will be perfect for your customer. So with that idea, when you build relationship with your customer and you're not selling, you are actually providing solution, then you are breaking that barrier of distrust and building a relationship of trust where your ideal customer or your team members will come to you over and over again. You want to provide your customers reason for them to buy because they want to buy. They want to look for solutions. And if you can give them the solution, they will pay any price to get that solution from you, knowing that you are going to walk them through. One of the things that I have found when your people are salesy, 
They sell the product, they sold it and they're getting excited and they don't realize that that customer who has that product doesn't know how to use it. And when is the last time you bought something and you didn't know how to use it? You looked at the reader's manual and you still can't figure it out. Doesn't it help to call the 800 number that is on that reader's manual to speak to the customer service so they can direct you? It makes a big difference. It is the same thing. When you're presenting your product to your clients and your customers, you want them to know that you are there. You are there to provide the service to walk them along the way. So apart from providing a manual with information of step-by-step -step what they need to do, they need to know that there's a reliable voice on the next side who's going to walk them through the process, whether it be through a training, whether it be through an actual phone call, but letting your customers know that, hey, I am here. If you can get understand the information I'm giving you, I am here or I have someone who is knowledgeable about my product that can help you. But most of all, when you help your client to solve a problem, you are providing them that benefits of that problem and the solution. When they get to that next stage, they may have other problems that arise. So what you want to know is to anticipate what other problems that your customers may have on that other side once they get to that point so that you can have a product that will be able to meet that um, problem and provide solutions to that problem to get them beyond that stage. I have found in my life experience that there is no such thing as the grass is green on the other side. After years of living and moving from one step of the ladder of my success to another, I have found that every step comes with new challenges. So anticipating these new challenges, knowing what the customer is going to feel like in that position, and knowing what solution they are looking for so that you can be able to present that solution. When you do that, you are now creating a system where your customers are coming over to you again and again for solutions. So understand, as you present this solution, you're always having a call to action. Hey, here's the solution. I am providing you the solution. Here's the action you need to take in order to be able to have this product that will help you solve the problem that you have. Always create a continuity program in your business. So many of us have gone to McDonald's and you've always noticed when you go to McDonald's, if you order a hamburger, they're going to ask you, do you want French fries with it? Or do would you like, what else would you like? Would you like to get the apple pie? Always upgrade your product so that your potential customers or your team members always having the extra benefits to help them grow. As you do this, as you build relationship, as you're providing value, your customers and your team members will come to you over and over again because they know that you have the answers to their questions. Now, I love Nordstrom. Nordstrom girl, love to shop at Nordstrom. What I love about Nordstrom is this idea that you can go to one cosmetic line and they provide you the solution. You can get your favorite mascara from one cosmetic line, but that same person that served you from that cosmetic line could actually go to the other cosmetic line and get you a better product. So that understanding that as you are building your business, you're always providing that service, that better service to your customers that they are gonna to come to you over and over again because they know you have the solution. I really believe in building relationship with our customers. When you build that relationship, there is no other way of gaining your customer's trust than to always letting them know that you have a solution. And maybe your products or your services is not the solution, but directing them to other solution as well making sure that your customers come to you over and over again. So today we talked about how to build that relationship. We talked about this idea of not selling, but creating value. Also remember, as you're creating value, always present your message to the platform that your ideal customers are congregating in. 
So whether that ideal platform is YouTube or the ideal platform is Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, always be present there. One way, one thing you can do is have your potential customers or ideal customers or ideal team members subscribe to your channels. And so this way they can hear what you have to say. So today we have talked about the insider's guide to creating value for your perfect customers and get return on your investment. Next podcast will be about one of my favorite authors um, who is actually dominating the digital marketing business. And I am going to talk about this famous author and how you can use this information from this famous author to also build your business so that you can grow. Thank you for joining us today. See you next time. If you would like to get more information on how to build your direct marketing business using online strategies as well as social media, please go to our website, momunairedigitalmarketing.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe and also make some comments of what you would like to hear in our next show. Thank you. Bye-bye.